Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to be going over five tips that are going to really help you out with Oriana. This uh, guide is particularly going to be for low elo players and people that are a little bit newer to Oriana. I'm going to go over some fundamentals and make sure you have a solid foundation before you start jumping into your new game. So this is predominantly going to be geared towards people uh, platinum and below. I really specialize on this channel in helping those people climb out of the low elo that they feel like they just been extremely stuck in so if you if that fits you if you want some help and if you have any questions for me i heavily encourage you to message me over on discord or twitch i'm going to put the links down below and i love to help you out um mid lane is just an absolute bass blast and i love the role so i really love talking about it so um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Lolfit. I do educational content. I do tips video, guide videos, and uh, opposition reports. Um, I have uh, D3 experience, and I play mostly mid, top, and support. Um, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, we will jump right into the tips. Alright, and jumping into tip number one, I just want to go real quickly over some basic rune setups and how you can adapt them to different matchups. My absolute personal favorite is the Corrupting Potion. Start with the Time Warp Tonic Biscuit Delivery Combo. The way Oriana's kit works is that she is extremely item dependent and can scale extremely hard if you're able to just CS a lot, stick around in lane a lot, and get those experience levels and most importantly gold to get those huge alts in the late game team fight so this will really help you uh, sustain up in lane also the area is going to be extremely strong with Oriana because it's going to increase your shield strength it's going to increase your autos that you're going to be trying to weave in as much as possible with your passive and then again monoflow band allows you to stick around in lane longer transcendence will give you a lower cooldown which is very important for her kit and then gathering storm will give her a little bit more late game power obviously you can adjust some of these depending on the matchups a bit of a caveat with my favorite build though is if you are going against ignite users you might struggle a little bit if you do not have a base hp item uh you might might want to go barrier in those kind of matchups or look for a door and ring start so do not take someone that's like oh you should be building this on oriana every single time i saw faker i saw bjergsen do this build once and i'm going to build it every single time those people constantly adjust their um their summoners their starting items sometimes even their max orders and their runes based on what they're facing so how you're going to learn this is just through experience or you can ask me down in the comments down below if you're, there's a matchup you're really struggling say you're against fizz and you're like ah oh, shit i always lose to fizz i hate getting first pick mid lane i always get counter pick with fizz i can help you out with that kind of stuff but this is, should be a basic um setup against a poke lane mage i would be running something like that if i was against something an assassin that needs to scale early i might be running something like a secondary resolve um with bone plating and a revival to increase my shields and to really get a strong uh, anti-burst prevention with a Doran's ring start maybe into an early Seeker's arm guard against Zed and it would change up for Fizz. So um, just really try when you're a new player it's so important to make the game as forgiving as possible um, so if you do fall behind you can recover the last thing you want to be is an extreme detriment to your team when you're losing because a lot of the time say you're losing lane there are other lanes that might be doing well so you do not want to start having your loss start affecting the other people's roles because an effective player is going to take his lead and bring it to the other roles in the other lanes they're going to take your tower then they're going to roam to the other towers or they're going to start taking a lot of objectives and start taking rift heralds and dragons so really start and try and prevent um when you are playing the champion and try and be as impactful as possible with her um again if you have any questions or if you have your own tips i would love to hear uh your thoughts down below and that will wrap up tip number one Alright, and let's jump into tip number two. Now I want to go over two different ways in which you can approach trades. The first one is going to be against a lane opponent that has a lot of turnaround potential on you. Something like a Zed or a Fizz, and you guys are equal in lane or they're ahead. How you want to play this out would be an auto QW auto into a E, and then any return damage, you're going to have your shield uh, to protect you from them. The second 
type of lane trade would be an aggressive lane trade where you would want to be kiting them towards this way because this is the way they're going to retreat most likely back to their tower if they fade to the bushes usually this means they're trying to bait you in so um, this is what you want to look for when you're doing an aggressive trade you want to do auto move qw auto and then an e and then obviously use your alt as you see fit so just really pay attention to the lane trade and the dynamic in the lane and your current matchup it is going to come down to experience to get really ex to get really good at which trade you should be using when you are playing oriana also one thing to keep in mind with your ultimate is that it is going to displace the champion in a direction when you are um doing your r it's going to pull them towards the ball so if the ball is behind them it is going to pull the ball that way if the ball is in front of them it is going to pull them towards the ball it's always towards the ball so be careful you don't want to give them an extra little um dash away from you if the ball is um in front of them okay or, or, or behind them sorry so always keep this in mind in your trades and look to optimize also a very quick thing uh, that you really want to look for in these trades is a uh, is to set up your ultimate and this can be done by a very weird thing but it's called a sombrero when you're playing oriana and this would be you Press your R to channel it, and then you flash. This is going to catch a lot of people off guard, and it's going to be a very good way to just really, really give you the highest percentage of landing your ult, because a lot of the times when it is delayed a little bit, they might have some time to run away. But if you're literally taking the ball in on you with your ultimate, it is just going to be extremely effective. So um, use this uh, when you are know you can win the all in and you are rather far ahead. Uh, that's going to wrap up tip number two. Uh, those are just kind of three basic ways uh, to kind of improve your lane trades uh, as well. I know this aren't all the possible ways. I just am trying to set up lower elo players um, to do the most effective trades. And uh, let's get into tip number three. Alright guys, and let's jump into tip number three. I want to talk about optimal team fight. Here we got a little bit of a team fight set up. And what I want to talk about a little bit is ball carriers. It is a lot better to be placing your ball on other people as opposed to just throwing it from yourself because it's going to be a little bit less obvious. Oriana is a very old champion. People know how the kit works. If you just walk up to the ADC and they see you, they're going to think, oh, okay, that guy's just going to QWR on me and it's going to be fairly obvious but what you want to look for in a ball carrier there are a couple different things first up the premier is something that has stealth whether it be something like evelyn um whether it be something like twitch shaco is my absolute favorite to be a uh, or uh, the ball carrier um but also you can look for things like divers with very long distance dashes everyone's seen the zach oriana combos that can just be absolutely disgusting and old tried and true thing would be something like Malphite. So something with a big CC that can set up your ultimate and really get the ball rolling in team fights. So always look for a unexpected um, combo with your ball and this is going to really pay off as opposed to just throwing it off. Oh, that actually reminds me of a small little tip, a two-part tip with you guys. You really want to bind it so you can automatically self-cast. You can find this in the, uh, the hotkeys and then, uh, let's see here, what is it? Player movement. Uh, abilities and summoners quick cast quick cast self so i have it with a control modifier so i can automatically shield myself whenever i want to i don't have to do something like this where i'd have to press the e on myself so always make sure that you have a self cast on your e shield and this is going to help you out a lot with other champions like something like a lulu so just keep that in mind um okay back to the optimal team fights you always want to look for uh, an optimal ball carrier. Also, how team fights are going to play out is the front lines are going to engage each other. The back line is going to be extremely inclined 
to engage on your front line in a team fight. So this means that they are going to be paying a lot less attention to you when you are looking um, to combo them. So this will be an optimal team fight. Do not look to throw, just throw a ball QW and then your ultimate in when the enemy hasn't really engaged much. Because the more things that are going on in the team fight, the more chaos is going, the higher chances you are going to land the ball. This is going to come with experience, but please, please keep in mind, you want to wait for a more opt opportune moment to throw out your combo. If you have any questions about this, uh, please me hit me up in the comments down below and I'll try my best to uh, help you out. And that will wrap up team fighting with Oriana. All right, and jumping into tip number four, I'm going to talk a little bit about roaming because Oriana brings a lot to the table post level six with her slow from her W and then also her R is going to be quite effective in roams as well. So this is more of a, a generic uh, tip for a lot of mid laners, but I really like to um, put these in just to help out anyone that is a mid lane player and you can apply it to any other champion that you play. The other tips were more oriented towards Oriana, but this one is going to be about roaming. Now, when you are ahead, when you have a fog of war advantage with a mage, it is so insanely strong. So how you want to capitalize on this is with the Oracle lens and control ward. When you fade to a lane, a lot of the times, particularly in low elo, people are going to follow you almost right away even if the lane is pushed because they do not want to get flamed by their teammates so standing in this bush right here is going to allow you to get a trade first of all away from their tower it's going to be a very long way for them to walk and then also you're going to be able to land pretty much your full combo because they are have no idea what's coming at them so always look for these kinds of traps when you are playing uh i mean these traps work all the way Way up to I, i'm guessing what like challenger <laughs> masters at least i mean i even see this these kind of traps in pro play so always look to take advantage of vision control when you are playing these these traps are going to be really good you can set it up here if they're a little bit more cocky they might just go through the river so you can look for a trap here and then also if you're just looking to do a true roam you can just do a safer loop around this way if their jungle is extremely strong so look to play around with it look to take advantage look to add it add it to your your overall kit and will make you a better mid laner by um, just making your movements a little bit more complex and giving you a little bit better uh, macro play when you are playing from the mid lane because you are going to be really strong. Also, when you are setting up these vision traps, you might catch out supports and junglers that are going to be, ha they're going to have less access to gold, they're, so they're going to be weaker than you, and they're also going to be lower levels because they do not have access to these solo lanes like you do. So these are just going to be extremely effective um, when you are playing mages and uh, this is, is going to be really good on Oriana, particularly if you have something like Ignite and an easy lane opponent. It's just going to be a great way to set yourself up with any kinds of kills. Um, if you're on uh, the red side, you can also look to just sit in this bush. It's just go where you think people are going to uh, go. All right, and that will wrap up tip number four. All right, guys, and let's jump into the final tip. Now, this is going to heavily revolve around the practice tool. Obviously, um, with Oriana, you really need to focus on getting a high number of CS so that uh, that's just a given that you should be get really used to her autos and get really used to the different damage thresholds on minions and how uh, you, you just need to overall increase your CS numbers. If you're struggling to bronze, silver, or gold, you can carry those games just by getting high CS numbers. So uh, with that out of the way, I want to talk about something very Oriana specific. Now, that that is the tether of the ball. You have to get extremely used to the delay that it's going to have when it is thrown from a far distance. They will see it coming. And the last thing you want to do is not know the tether range, have the ball on a ball carrier, and the ball carrier dives in. Say he dives in right here, and he dives into the enemy, and you all... But the ball is back on you. You just have to have a... The ball needs to be a part of you. You just really need to get a good understanding of the tether. And how you are going to be able to do that is just by going in the practice tool, getting used to the max range that is going to be uh, displayed when you are 
have the ball attached to someone that is the max tether range that you are able to keep the ball on someone so just keep this really ingrained into your mind it is going to pay off there are going to be a couple times where you're going to flub up on oriana that is okay don't give up the champion just because the tether is going to be a little bit of a more difficult um mechanic to understand but it is really she's such a great champion she's over just overall a really great well-balanced champion she probably won't see any nerfs probably won't see any buffs as well but she is just in a very strong state right now so i really think it's worth the time investment in learning her unique um, mechanic that she has with her tether so just get really used to okay i can alt there you should be able to just do this by eyesight you shouldn't have to um you have this little bit of a yellow line around you just get really used to uh, the tether and i think this is going to pay off so much um the only way to do it is really just get a lot of experience with a couple of these things it it comes down to a lot of experience so i heavily encourage you to just play as much as possible get as much experience on the champion play and ranked play against the best uh possible enemies that you can find this is going to be found in rank solo you're not going to play up against the best competition in normals that's going to wrap up my video guys if you enjoyed the content please remember to like and subscribe and as always take it easy